Shalom, shalom, shalom. First and foremost, before we get this epistle started, I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory to our beloved Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, our beloved Lord and Savior. Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechak, Wadash. Double honors as always to the apostles, the elders, and the sense of Akim of Great Millstone, who rule well, who teach well, who we learn the truth from daily, whether you're here for bareness or serious salutations, as always, to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel, as well as the speckled bird among that number, which are the Hebrews, life foreigners, scattered among the heathen, that look like the heathen. And this is an epistle that I had entitled, You Breathe His Air, You Follow His Rules. All right. And I wanted, in this epistle, I wanted to just get on the topic of how uh, you got a lot of rebellious jakes and just, you know, the, the entire, uh, the inhabitants of the earth are just rebellious as a whole. All right. Because first and foremost, the nation of Israel, all 12 tribes, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and the speckled bird is like foreigners. We fell from grace by disobeying the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah. So the entire earth is out of course. All right. And this topic was inspired through the Spirit after listening to the um, the lesson done done by the beloved brother Azam Awaf from GMS Dallas. All right. On this page, uh, GMS uh, Psalms for Thought 144. Subscribe and be edified. He had mentioned. You know, he made the parallel between how, you know, when you have a father, you know, our, our earthly fathers, you know, they set down the house rules. All right. And if you don't follow the house rules, you know, there's punishments. And then if you just prove to be too rebellious, then you get kicked out. And that's likewise what Yahweh Bosh Miel Shai did to us. But let me go ahead and get the first precept that um shows what we're supposed to do. So this is the book of Exodus. I'm going to start at chapter 20. Verse 1. And the subheading says the Ten Commandments. And it reads, And the Most High Yahweh spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord Yahweh Allah which brought thee out of the land of Matazarium, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord, Yahweh, Alahaika, am a jealous power, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and shewing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord, Yahweh, Alahaika, in vain, for the Lord, Yahweh, will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. And that's just the name of a few of the uh, Ten Commandments. But the point is, the Lord, he gave us ground rules. All right. Like any father, he's laying down the ground rules and he's letting us know, look, I love my children, but you are going to fear me. Because if you don't fear me, you are going to do all types of weirdo type of activity and you are going to get worser and worser and worser. And that's the whole point of um, not sparing the rod. And the Lord, he doesn't he doesn't spare the rod. But he also at the same token, because the Lord is balanced, he has no problem rewarding you for being an obedient son or an obedient daughter all right but if you disobedient as a son or a daughter then he's gonna have to chasten you and if you get too out of hand then yeah and you know a chastening for the lord can be you being deleted you being put to death because the heavenly father he's not bound by earthly rules he you know it's nothing for him to put you to death and you come back in the reincarnation all right putting you to death is like a time out to the lord now, you may not feel that way. You may feel pure terror as it goes on, but that should let you know to fear the Lord ahead of time. So you don't have to find out the hard way. Now, let me get this other precept. I think it's the book of Exodus chapter 20. Yep. Exodus chapter 24. Come. On. This is the book of Exodus chapter 24. Or do I want 23? Let me make sure. I'm going to make sure I got the right one. It's a particular word in that I'm, I'm looking for. Con. Okay, Exodus chapter 24, verse 1. And the subject says, People affirm their covenant with the Most High. And this is talking about the Israelites. All right. Verse 1. And he said unto Masha, Come up unto the Lord Yahweh, thou and Aharon and Nadab and Abihu and the 70 elders of, of Yahshua Allah, and worship ye afar off. And Masha alone shall come near the Lord Yahweh, but they shall not come nigh, neither shall the people go up with him. And Masha came and told the people all the words of the Lord Yahweh, 
and all the judgments. And all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words which the Lord Yahweh hath said, we will do. And Masha wrote all the words of the Lord Yahweh, Bashem Yahushah, and rose up early in the morning and built an altar under the hill and twelve pillars, according to the twelve tribes of Israel. Yahshua Allah. Verse 5. This also lets you know that the covenant is only with the Israelites. All right, verse 5. And he sent young men of the children of Yahshua Allah, which offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen unto the Lord Yahweh. And Masha took half of the blood and put it in basins and sprinkled of the blood. So like in half of the blood, he sprinkled on the altar. And he took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people. And they said, all that the Lord hath said, all that the Lord Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahushua hath said, we will do and be obedient. And Masha took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant which the Lord Yahweh Bashem Yahushua hath made with you concerning all these words. And there you go. So right there, the Lord told us what it was. He didn't lie to us. It's not like one of those, those movies that Esau Edom puts out there. You know, Esau, the self-proclaimed so-called white man, the red Hebrew Edomite. That old serpent called the devil and Satan that the Bible speaks of. It's not like those movies that he puts out where you make a devil deal and it's all sweet for the first, uh, I don't know, the first two years or something like that. And then next thing you know, the devil comes back to collect and then your soul goes to hell. No, the Lord lets you know what it is. You do this, you get this. You do this, you do that, you get that. So he let us know what we were supposed to do. What's the, what's the ground rules? The blessings for obedience, the blessings for disobedience. Jake said we'll be obedient. Everything you say, we're going to do. And Jake didn't do that. So now you got Jake complaining and bitching and moaning when they get, you know, when the Lord goes upside their head. Where was the Lord that we went into slavery? He was going upside your head. He was right there. That's like asking your father, where, Dad, where was you at when I was getting my ass whooped? I was the one using the belt. And right, and rightfully so, because look at how Jake acts. Jake has only gotten worse. And let me go to this precept right here. Amos chapter 3, verse 1. And the subject says, all the tribes are guilty. Verse 1. Hear this word that the Lord Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai hath spoken against you, O children of Yahshua Allah, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Matazariam, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Jake is being wicked. All right. Now, the Lord has raised up a remnant, the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel, and Adawan Ratazari be of the very elect. But ultimately, we admit that we sin before the Lord and he's having mercy on us. But two thirds of our people, a good number of them won't even so much as admit they did anything wrong. They just keep complaining about the, the ass whooping they had to take. And that's off. Now going to this precept, Isaiah chapter one, verse five. So lucky, I'm going to start at verse three. And it reads, the ox knoweth his owner and the ass his master's crib. But Israel doth not know, my people doth not consider. And in this precept, the Lord, through the prophet Isaiah, he's comparing Israel to two stupid creatures, all right? Incredibly simple creatures. But these two creatures, they know, basically, they know better than to bite the hand that feeds them for the most part. Israel doesn't even know or consider. Because you got Jake's into all these idols that didn't save them out of the land of Egypt. You got Jake into all these idols that didn't, that didn't even create them. They created these idols. These idols are the um, <clears throat> these idols, these false gods that that the uh, the nations have made and that Jake has followed. They're the delusions of an adult mind. You you can't be sane and create an idol. You can't call something a god that you created that can easily be destroyed. It's made after you're corruptible and you made something corruptible. The heavenly Father Yahweh, he can't. He's not corruptible. He's incorruptible. He's always been here. He has no beginning, no end. No one created the Heavenly Father. No one said, here, uh, here, Yahweh, Bosh, Meow, Shah, you can have this. No, no one tells him what to do. And this is another point the beloved brother Azim Awath made in his video earlier. The Heavenly Father, he doesn't have to, he, he's never asked anybody for permission to do anything that he does, man. And Jake don't understand that. Jake, and then not by not understanding that, you don't have the fear of the Lord. And since the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, you don't have the understanding of what true order is and why it's vital. And because you don't understand it, that's why you keep knocking your head against the wall. That's why you keep slamming your head against a brick wall. That's why you keep messing yourself up and never realizing 
what you need to do to change your ways so you can stop getting jacked up. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 4 and it reads, Our sinful nation, people laden with iniquity. It's like <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 1 verse 4 and it reads, Our sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord Yahweh Ba'asham Yahweh and they have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. Right, Jake going off. This is why you got other precepts where the Lord calls us backsliding Israel. And here's the point, verse 5. Why should ye be stricken any more? Ye will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. That's the Lord saying, what's the purpose of me whooping your ass anymore? And you know, Jake growing up, we can already attest to this, you know. Brothers already know how this goes. You know, it's you got some siblings or, you know, you may have been that that child. Or, you know, if it wasn't you, you may have had siblings that have been like, OK, it comes time for you all to get your ass whipped. You get your ass whipped. You may be the sibling that, you know, all right, the ass whip was enough for me. I don't want my ass whipped again. I'm just going to listen to what mom and pop say. You know, I don't want my ass whipped again. I'm listening to what granddad and grandma say. All right. And you got the sip. You got your other siblings. That no matter how many times they get their ass whooped, they start to get rebellious. They start to buck up. You know, some some siblings are so bugged out. They get their ass whooped and are on some, all right, let's just get it over with type shit, you know, and just, they don't care. Like, they're like, all right, I'm going to get my ass whooped. I'm still not going to change. It's going to make, you know, that's basically what the Lord is saying right here. Why should you be stricken anymore? The Lord put us in the captivity so we'll learn a lesson, and Jake still didn't get it. Jake got put in the timeout, and they were still asking for their cell phone back. And the Lord's like, I'm just going to fucking, I'm just going to, I'm just going to destroy you niggas and start over, man. Because Jake seemed to forget that the Lord had no problem starting over with just Noah and deleting the entire earth. Jake seemed to forget that the Lord didn't care that Abraham had seven other children aside from Isaac, but he still was only dealing with Isaac. And the rest of those children are heathen. Jake seems to forget that Isaac had two sons. And despite Esau being the older... The heavenly the elder Salakia, the heavenly father chose Jacob, the younger, as his chosen people. The Lord does what he wants to do, whether you can understand it or not. So the best thing you can do is just fall in line. So let me go ahead and get this precept real quick. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 13, and it reads, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear the Most High, Yahweh Ba'asham Yahweh Shai, and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. We only got one job, and Jake screws that up every chance they get. Serve the Lord. And if you're thinking that it's too hard to serve the Lord, then you deserve to be destroyed. You weren't about, oh, well, I got to, you know, I can't serve the Lord. I got this job to work. I can't serve the Lord. I got to take care of my woman. Nigga, if you serve the Lord, he has no problem providing all of those things. He knows what you need. But it just goes to show you, Jake don't got the faith. And then when they least in the kingdom of heaven, they've earned that everlasting shame and contempt. When they get destroyed on this side, do death by pain, they've earned it. Because you think the creator of heaven and earth doesn't know your situation. He made you and your situation. He knows what you need. He can give it to you. But you got to have faith in him. He's not going to be a simp and just give you something just because he made you know. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 14, and it reads, For the Most High Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Right. So if you're doing good, the Lord has no problem taking care of you and yours. But if you're wicked, don't expect anything good to come from the Lord. If he if you still breathing, the Lord is just reserving you for judgment, man. It's not because you you um you that guy or nothing like that or you some bad bitch. No, you you can get deleted. It's just the Lord has a real gruesome way that he's going to do it just to get the point across, to stop playing with him. So ultimately, the conclusion of the whole matter is fear the Lord and keep his commandments. You know, you got rebellious ass, you know, you got rebellious ass 304s hopping on the internet talking about they don't want to follow a, a, a tyrannical this and that. But you, but you, but females is out here getting, you know what I'm saying, letting heathen, <laughs> you, you flying out to Dubai to, to let dudes basically defecate on your face and all this other type of stuff for money. But the Lord that's promising the kingdom to his people, 
you got a problem with following them. It's not tyrannical when you basically getting slutted out by countless dudes that are not going to take you seriously, but it's tyrannical to fear the Lord who can give you an actual man that would take care of you. And yeah, I may, I'm mentioning that goofy ass, you know, that Northern Kingdom chick with the glasses, but all of our women acting the way they act when it comes to the out of order women, it's symbolic of the nation of Israel being rebellious against the house. It's like it being rebellious against Yahweh Baal Shem Yahweh Shai. That's part of the curses. And it's a curse that helps remind us of how bad we was going off. But the elect of the spirit and power of Yahweh Baal Shem Yahweh Shai and the sacrifice of Yahweh Shai, we coming back into the fold. And I don't want to run the Zah, we endure to the end and we might be saved. But that's all I have for this epistle. Hopefully this was edifying and exhorting to the elect of the nation of Israel, to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel. Once again, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to our beloved Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, our beloved Lord and Savior. Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Bahasham, Rechak, Wadash. Double honors as always to the apostles, the others in the sense that I can be great millstone, who rule well, who teach well, who we learn the truth from daily, whether you're here for bearing and sincere citations as always to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel, as well as the speckled bird among that number, which are the Hebrews of life foreigners scattered among the heathen that look like the heathen. Kwam Yasharala. And a ball, a ball. We're almost out of here. I don't want with the Zah. We got next. I don't want with the Zah. And this is one last precept that I have pertaining to Heavenly Father right here. Now, this precept, we're supposed to do this as men in the flesh. But ultimately, the Heavenly Father, he always constantly, constantly does this himself. All right. Sirach chapter 33, verse 20. And it reads, As long as thou livest and hast breath in thee, Give not thyself over to any, for it is better, so like it, for better it is that thy children should seek to thee than that thou should stand to their courtesy. In all thy works, keep thyself the preeminence, leave not a stain in thine honor. Right, so for the Lord's holy namesake, you know, his, his namesake would be stained if he just bend, he would just bend to your will because you don't like the situation. Nigga, you wicked, and who the hell are you? The Lord is the one with wisdom. The Lord is the one that, come on now, the Lord is above wisdom. He's the one that created everything. He knows what's good for you and what's bad for you. You don't even know what the hell's going to happen to you tomorrow or the next second. So who the hell are you to, to want the Lord to bow to your courtesy? The Lord is a tyrant. You you dumbass jakes are fucking, um, <laughs> you jakes are oppressing yourselves. You, you are your own tyrant. You oppress yourself by giving into your flesh all the time. You say stupid shit against the Lord who can delete you with a thought in the most painful way. So, yeah, no, no man, no father is going to have his children tell him what to do. When he didn't, when he made the house, when he laid the foundation, when he's the one that's given the order, when he's the one that had everything in order and you messed it up. And even then he's giving you the, the, um, the way to come back into the fold and get right even though you don't deserve it so keep that in mind and for the hopeful elected the nation of israel keep striving you know don't worry about how the witch, how the wicked is going to be judged inquire how the righteous is going to be saved shema yasha allah yahweh allah yahweh achad shalom